Michael Van Ronkel here for HotCars.com. I'm out in the middle of nowhere with the new for 2023 Mazda CX-50. At first glance, you can tell this is a little bit more rugged, a little bit more athletic than the CX-5, which it will be sold alongside with. Yes, it has a turbo. Yes, it's got all-wheel drive. And you'll even be able to get it with all-terrain tires from the factory. But Mazda brought us out here on street tires to show us how this thing can do on an off-road course and for a little bit of trailering because it's rated at 3,500 pound tow rating. I'm curious to see how it does, so let's go get this thing dirty. But first, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out. Thanks. climb into the new CX-50, it's pretty roomy and spacious. I'm six foot one, a lot of headroom. And for the segment that they're going after here, that's an important consideration that we'll talk about later. But right now, I got an off-road course waiting for me just ahead. This is the turbo with the premium plus, starting at 41,000. So you've got a 227 horsepower, 310 pound feet engine when running on 87 octane. You bump that up to 93 octane and you get 256 horsepower, 320 pound-feet. But as we know in off-roading, it's more about car control and chassis tuning. So I'm going to be curious how this does with its three different drive modes. Here we go. We're turning off into the dirt. I'm going to click it down into off-road mode. They made a big deal this morning in a little presentation about preventing wheel spin with, you know, using the brakes to help the all-wheel drive system and the differential send power to the right wheel. Driving on public roads has been pretty impressive so far. It's pretty flat, it handles pretty well for just, you know, a little crossover. It's basically a Mazda 3 lifted up or the new MX-30 also shares this chassis. It is not the same chassis as the CX-5 and it's a little confusing to me that they're gonna sell both at the same time, but the CX-5 is a global car and this is tailored to the North American consumer who wants to go off-roading. And they're even talking like roof tents and maybe we'll go overlanding in this thing. We're on Goodyear Eagle touring tires though. There's gonna be a Meridian package that comes with 18s and all-terrain tires. We don't really know many more specifics other than that. It will be the turbo model, worth noting. But right now we're on 20s with Goodyear Eagle touring tires. So it's like, pretty questionable for off-roading. It's a bold move by Mazda. Maybe I'll be impressed. We're just gonna have to find out. So they've got this little loop set up. They want me to do it first at 30 miles an hour in off-road mode. Now the interesting part is they've got this thing they call G-Vector Control, where it sort of adjusts the throttle when you're turning to shift weight forward and have a little bit more grip on the front wheel. So let's see how this thing does like that. Ooh, it's a little skiddy in there, but it's pretty good. I lost a little speed down to maybe 26 miles an hour. And we have to remember we are on all season tires, not all terrains. So just keeping it at like 30 here. You can hear not a creek, a lot of creaks and rattles, not too many hard bumps. The suspension's doing a good job. The weird part about the G vector control system is it doesn't have adaptive shocks. This car does not have shocks that are, you know, firm, soft, stiff, whatever you want to call it. It's just off-road mode, and they're playing with the actual throttle and then the all-wheel drive settings. So it's kind of a novel way of controlling chassis tuning while off-roading that I've never really heard of anywhere else. Now on city streets, we'll get into how that actually feels when you go into hard corners because it's definitely a little bit different. Here's a little rise, kept it easily at 30 there. Not nearly as tight as a turn, but we're definitely kicking up clouds of dirt. I'm going 35 now, oh no. And here's a little rise, not bad. We got cows we gotta watch out for. Classic overlanding. So that was the test loop with just a couple turns. Um, we're not supposed to be going 30 around here, but this thing, it's, it's pretty good. It's got electric power steering involved with that G-Vector control system. And when you put it in sport mode or normal mode or off-road mode, the steering gets tighter. It's got a little bit less assist 
And so far, the electric power steering has actually been pretty good. It's got a perfect weight for city driving. And then, you know, driving in dirt, it always feels light because the tires just don't have as much grip. So it feels, you know, I'd say pretty nice for electric power steering. Obviously, we would prefer hydraulic at all times. But I'll be curious to see what the next lap is like with off-road mode off. Does it get a little bit more squirrely in that initial tight turn? So here we go, lap two, they want me to put it in, norm, in normal mode. Get it up to 30. Now that I know the course a little better, we'll see how it does. The steering is already noticeably lighter, a little bit less responsive. Holding it at 30 here. Yeah, it sort of takes it a little wider there but I didn't mash the throttle quite as hard because I knew what I was getting into. So, you know, we're not doing the most controlled scientific experiment, but I'd say all in all, minorly noticeable difference. They're obviously keeping us relatively safe here. We're not going at rally car speeds or anything, and we are on those tires. But yeah, I prefer it in off-road mode just for the steering alone. I'd have to do some more hard dune charging to really maybe tell the difference in that g-vectoring control system but on the pavement I can tell the difference that that makes in the steering night and day versus what you would consider a normal car's normal electric power steering so now that I've done this part let's take this second turn a little bit faster maybe I mean it still does pretty good it's a nice all-wheel drive system it's front-wheel drive biased it's got a nine plate clutch in the middle that then can send, it can fully lock and send 50% or 90% they said as much if there was no grip at all in the front tires to the rear. So that's pretty good. Now we're gonna go do a more hardcore little off-roading section. All right, we're gonna do a third lap here in sport mode, which is supposed to be for, you know, tarmac driving, but let's see how it does. The steering tightened up a little bit the most noticeable difference usually. Oh, I'm going 40 all of a sudden. <laughs> Here we go, 30 into this corner. Oh yeah, it's sliding a lot more now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how much that's gonna show up on camera, but it definitely, it got a little bit more squirrely there for sure. I was probably going a little over 30, which might've helped. But I mean, it is cool to play with the different modes on a car like this. Whenever I get a car with all different settings, I always mess around with all of them and try and find whichever one I like based on the road and my mood as much as anything. But now I'm curious to see how this thing does because the CX-50 is supposed to be rugged and overlanding, but it's a crossover and we're on summer tires or all season tires, excuse me. And they're gonna apparently have us do some like hill climbs or something. Now they told me that over the course of a few waves of journalists doing this, They've had a few flat tires, which doesn't surprise me at all, given what I know about what journalists do in cars while off-roading, but also just because of the tires. So I'm going to be curious to see what this little section is like. Here we go, 30 again. That was fine. Let's see what happens if I stomp on it. I mean, it's pretty good. Slow down for this dip. I'm impressed. I'm not getting like a bunch of chunk, chunk, chunk. There's a pretty smooth road, but it is a little washboarded. Let's go do the real off-roading though. Here we go, this is the hill climb. I hope you can see it. One way that I'm gonna be able to see it better is we've got the front camera that I can click on for off-roading. Put it in drive here. Just take it slow and steady so that we don't get these uh, all season tires slipping and sliding too much. I feel a little bit, there's a little articulation there and just keep my foot on the gas nice and steady. I see some washboards, etc. It's just climbing up the hill though. I'm not feeling much slipping and sliding. There's a little bit. Ooh, but it's still revving up. It's not like the traction control is all of a sudden shutting down. So that's pretty cool. Cause a lot of the time when the traction control kicks on, when you start slipping and sliding, you just lose all power. It stops you from spinning and then you start out rolling back and you have to start from a stop again. So now we're gonna do a steep descent where this camera is really gonna come in handy because I cannot see anything. Literally cannot see anything. I'm using the camera almost 100% here on the brakes pretty hard. It's good and steep. We're sliding a little bit. 
We're definitely sliding. We're in ABS now, but it's under control. ABS, ability to brake while steering, not just anti-lock brakes. You know, that was pretty steep for what I would call a crossover. Now we're just back onto a normal dirt road. I'm pretty impressed, mostly because of the tires. So this car is having to deal with those tires while using the GVC, G-Vector control system, and its all-wheel drive system with the braking differential lock type thing that they've got programmed. And it works pretty well. You know, dirt is different than sand, is different than rocks, is different than snow. But we got what we've got here, and it's, uh, it's definitely a little slippery. And I would uh, kind of like to come back in like my Montero or my Cayenne with real tires on and see what that's like. Now those are also much heavier vehicles. The Cayenne is like 5,200 pounds. Montero is probably close to there with all the stuff I got in it and on it. But you know, I think it's more like 4,500 from the factory. Here we go, we got a little, a little tilt action going. We got nice deep ruts here. I think we hit full droop for a second there. Independent rear suspension, of course. That was definitely full droop. Taking this a little slower after uh, hearing that for a sec. But, you know, this thing's, it's, it's impressive. I was surprised Mazda wanted to do real off-roading. Now, this is not bouldering, but it's not bad. Here's a good tilt. Woo! I wish I had an inclinometer <laughs> just to see. That would be a fun little detail if they could add that. Here we go up a nice, another little steep bit. And we're digging in. And I gotta turn my camera on because I can't see anything. <laughs> I like that camera. The Montero does not have that. You gotta pick your line a little bit more carefully. Here I am just winging it in a Mazda. Ah! Now, you know, you put some real tires on, you air down. A lot of these bumps would soften out even more. I mean, you know. You know could be pretty fun out here. Hooning, they might call it, in a Mazda. That was nice and bumpy. Yeah, all right. Turn my camera back on, because I can't see anything. <laughs> and it's not that this car has bad visibility, it's just the nature of the course that they've selected. It's more hardcore than expected, for sure. I thought that they were just gonna soft road us up in here. Sliding a little bit to the side there, we're taking it slow. Got our camera going. Oh, yeah, crushing it, Mazda. Here's a nice little deep rut. What's our breakover angle and our approach angle? I should know these things. Yeah, it's good and bumpy in here. Rutted. Oh, all right. We got another little hill climb coming <laughs> and we're at some side angle. I wonder who, who decided to do this? This is great. <laughs> Yeah. And then, you know, you get up top of this ridge here and you just go a little faster and it's pretty smooth. Well, in case you couldn't tell, I'm in a different vehicle, even though it looks identical. And there's a trailer behind me. They've weighed it down with 3,500 pounds of gravel. We're gonna experience how the GVC function works with that extra weight on the tow hitch, which lifts up the front and reduces the actual grip of the front tire. So the steering input changes, again, like sport, normal, and off-road. So I click it up here into towing mode, and away we go. The first thing that we gotta do is accelerate out onto the highway and feel the power of that 2.5 liter turbocharged engine. It is sort of squirming a little bit as it gets up to speed, but now we're up to 55. And it's towing 3,500 pounds in terms of power just fine. The steering, you know, towing always messes with your vehicle dynamics. So, I mean, it feels pretty good. It's a little windy out there today, and I can feel definitely a little bit of sort of tail end thunking as this road is a little bit wavy. But pulling away there was just fine. And for such a light little CUV, towing essentially itself again, you know, you wouldn't want to be towing a boat, but maybe some jet skis or a camping trailer, or I don't know, what weighs 3,500 pounds? If you had a really light aluminum trailer and a really light race car, that's a maybe. But I would say maybe. But this is definitely 
this is definitely a vehicle that's for recreation. So one of those little camp setups with like a little stove and kitchen and maybe a pop-up tent on top would be pretty cool, I guess, especially given the off-roading we just did. Here's my turn, so we're gonna have to come almost to a complete stop here. I can feel the brakes. Yeah, they're a little less happy than they were perhaps earlier. Now we're gonna turn onto a smaller road. Hit a little cattle guard here. Yeah, we're coming through. It's definitely, you can feel it wanting to get a little bit more power. You wanna be a little higher in the rev range. I'd be curious what kind of MPGs it actually gets while towing. This thing's rated at, I believe, 25 combined for the turbo. So, you know, 29 on the highway without a trailer. I would imagine it does not get very good fuel economy while towing. Although once you get going, you know, a smaller trailer like this doesn't have a huge aero profile. So it's probably not too terrible. All right, we're in normal. Yeah, it's actually, you can sort of tell. Now we are going on a little bit of a downhill, but it did feel like a little bit more understeer there, pushing me down, pushing me around, pushing me wider. It sort of feels like towing that I'm used to in normal mode. And I felt a little bit more drop there in that little dip. It's interesting. It's interesting that they could tune the throttle response and steering to make a difference while towing. Now it's not huge, mind you, you still feel like you're towing in a small vehicle, but it is noticeable. I'm impressed. We'll let other reviews cover all of the tech and safety features and how the infotainment system works. You know, this is the top of the line trim at like $42,000, I think 41.6 officially. So it's got adaptive cruise control and lane keep assist and the sound system's pretty good and there's wireless charging for my phone here. It's all pretty nice. I like the layout of the interior. The seats are pretty nice. The AC blows really cold, which is nice. It was over 90 today while I was filming and I kept my very favorite feature on every new car, ventilated seats, kept them blasting. They are the hardest blowing cold air ventilated seats I've ever ridden in and I love that. So thank you, Mazda. The only problem in my mind is you wanna get the turbo because you need to have that boost. I can't really imagine this thing being fun to drive with 25% less power. But to get the turbo, all of a sudden you're looking from the base price of 26 and up, we're looking to 36. This one is, you know, pushing 42. That's pretty expensive. Are they also gonna be able to steal some market share from Audi? All in all, great car. We'll see how it does. I think styling wise and performance wise, it's great. I don't know. Let me know what you think about the pricing which I wish you could get a lower spec turbo at a lower price. That would be my only gripe other than electric power steering, which I always gripe about, and you know that. I hope you learned something watching this video on the new CX-50. If you did, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out. Thanks.